A busy start to the season for the Houston Dynamo continues as the New York Red Bulls will play their second game of the year, fourth game of the season in the first two weeks for this Dynamo team who advanced in the CONCACAF Champions Cup, eliminating St. Louis City SC. Glenn Davis, the longtime voice of Houston, gives us a couple minutes here. Uh, Glenn, number one, looking forward to seeing you over the course of the next 24, 36 hours. And let's talk about what the start of the year has meant for this Houston team. A lot of games in a short amount of time but I'm sure a lot of smiling faces knowing that they're going into the next round of the tournament. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you and Steve Jolly. We're going to put a sign up Red Bulls uh, radio in the house here tonight. So uh, welcome. Welcome to Houston. You're coming at a good time of the year. You know, I think it's a preseason that's been defined by injury. Uh, everybody in New York probably knows this Hector Herrera, uh, Sebastian Ferreira, who they were trying to reinvigorate, came back on a loan. Uh, in a goal scoring position, he pulled a hamstring. Um, Nelson Quinones Jr., uh, who is a wide player for the Dynamo, a Colombian, really starting to turn it on, injured. So the definition of the preseason really has been injury. This will be the fourth game uh, in 12 days for the Dynamo. But you know what's interesting? In these situations, there's always, uh, I think, as you guys know, a silver lining, and it's provided opportunities for others. And as each game has gone on, you're now looking at the bench getting better as people get healthy, like Franco Escobar and Amin Bossi. And then you're seeing guys like Sebastian Kowalczyk, who was a Polish signing last year. Nobody knew anything about him. And he's now played three really good games in a row. And, you know, you're looking at him going, well, wow, this guy could be in the first 11. So I think, you know, in the absence of others, it always brings opportunity. And I think it's playing out nicely at this stage uh, for the Dynamo uh, with the volume of games they have. Glenn, don't know if you have any sense of this, and uh, I'm sure Ben Olsen wouldn't tip his hand to it one way or the other. I'm thinking back to a Red Bull team that was in the Champions League uh, for many years from 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and, th and the schedule congestion was so hard to deal with. So you did have to use a lot of bench guys. And at the beginning part of the season, I always can remember the team thinking like, you have to pick one over the other. So if you're going to, if you want to keep advancing in CONCACAF, you might have to give up the second week of the regular season. No one's going to say that, obviously, because no, what, no matter what 11 you throw out, you're hoping that they're going to put together a good performance. How important is CONCACAF to the Houston Dynamo? Yeah, listen, I, I I have to believe it's important. I mean, I think we've seen teams over the years, historically in the, the league, look at these things differently, right? Remember the year Toronto just decided to pretty much negate the regular season and and it and it led to having a very tumultuous year. I think they go by it game by game and just and I know this sounds pretty cliche, but I think game by game, I think they go about it by looking at every game as a winnable game. We compete. Um, I, I know they're going to have to use other players, dip into the depth of their roster. But I think the biggest asset they have and I think the biggest asset many of us know is that if you can keep a team competitive in MLS all year long, and, and that's a challenge, you know, not having anybody, you know, dip the scale, keep an entire squad engaged and competitive. You're going to make the playoffs. Uh, so I don't know. You know, I remember last year him saying about the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. He's like, you know, and he's very honest, Ben Olsen. And he says, you know, yeah, early rounds, you're trying to give other people opportunity. But then once you get closer to winning the thing, all of a sudden, you know, your perspective on your lineup and who you play might change. Right. And that, that, that's actually what happened when the dynamo won the open cup last year. I mean, they were outplayed by Tampa in the USL. They were using a very mixed roster. They won that game sporting came in and outplayed them. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're advanced in the tournament and, and you notice the lineups changing and away they go and they win the thing. So, yeah, I don't know. He's never really prioritized anything other than saying every game we want to be competitive. So, not giving you a lot of insight. How how different maybe is it now for Ben Olsen, a guy that Red Bull fans obviously super familiar with his days with DC United. Now that he is, I'll say, established himself a little bit more with a winning culture, the Open Cup Championship last year, a Dynamo team that at times looked to be among the best in the West um, during, you know, different points of the regular season last year is now another year under his belt. Everyone a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, I think so. I, th I think it's not easy when you come into this market. It's very different than coming from the Eastern Conference and being at a place like D.C. And remember, he was out of the game for two years. But I think they've built a really competitive staff. Uh, everybody loves to say we got a great locker room. Um, 
I think there's a level of respect top to bottom in the team and the staff. I don't think people are always happy. They shouldn't be if they're not playing. But, um, yeah, no, I think he's done a very good job of that. And, look, he's had a lot of experience in motivating teams and keeping teams on edge uh, to compete. Now, they're learning a lot about life without Hector Herrera because this team, everything ran through him and his decision-making and getting him on the ball, uh, you know, a volume of times every game. And when you think of losing a player that, to me, could have been the MVP in the entire league last year and based on what he did, uh, and all those decisions and orchestration that this man provides during a game. I, I think when you're looking at these three games and you've seen the progression uh, to where they are now and others taking a little bit more responsibility, I think it's fascinating. So um, I think he's extremely comfortable. I think he doesn't panic. He's been there. He's done that. And he's pretty much seen it all. Glenn, finish with this one if you can. A lot of the names that you mentioned Injury-wise, attacking offensive-minded players has that put a little bit more focus on, hey, let's make sure in our in our back line that we really stay compact. And if we go zero zero into the seventy-fifth minute, we'll hope we can nick a goal here or there. I mean, looking at the results, you had a two-one loss against St. Louis in the first, a one-nothing win against St. Louis in the second, and a one-one draw against St. Uh, against Sporting Kansas City in the MLS opener. So. Goal scoring has been an issue, but that also means that a back line that's been pretty good in the first three games. So look, the, the goal scoring was issue at the beginning of last year, and it really was an issue to a degree, even though they scored 51 goals. As the team got into the playoffs against LAFC, they had no answers. And and the question has always been, who's going to provide goals? And, and I think that still is a big question mark right now. They're hoping for someone to emerge maybe pick up an under-22 initiative. But that that is the question, once again, coming into the season. The second, or the most important question last year, was Hector Herrera engaged? And we found out the answer to that. But this team last year was built on collective defending. Excellent collective defending team. Defended their, the, protected their goalkeeper well. The addition of Sviachenko, along with Mikael, who emerged, enabling you to move on a DP and teenage Hadebi, big so, you know, the nucleus of this team right now is the goalkeeper, the back four, and holding six in Artur. And there is a lot of strength and stability there. That keeps you in games. And, of course, with Herrera last year, it became a better possession team, which is also a way of saying you're a better defending team, right? So um, the collective defending, the effort, the energy that they put in every game, opponents have to match that. And 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 that is really the strength of the Dynamo as they try to figure out the attacking part. Glenn, I appreciate a couple of minutes here catching up. Uh, again, look forward to seeing you in person. Steve and I will welcome any kind of barbecue, ribs, <laughs> anything that you want to leave in our in our booth would be much appreciated. Well, let's hope they have some Texas barbecue, but you got to hit some barbecue while you're here, Doc. But thanks so much for having me on as always. Always a pleasure and always enjoy it.